1,609 clues have come and gone, but 26 new ones are headed your way as part of this special 60th edition of Disney. 100 Jeopardy, welcome in. As always, I am your host, Brian Perry, and thank you so much for joining me. Happy Easter to all of you who celebrate. Let's jump into the rules for this Easter weekend special 60th episode of the game. They're the same rules as always. You'll see there are a few categories that are dedicated to the holiday weekend, but we'll get to that in a little bit. If you do want to cheat, go right ahead. I won't tell anyone you my guest. In last week's episode 59, the final Jeopardy category was themes in reverse, where I played you the score backwards from a specific Disney or Pixar film, and you had to identify what movie that backwards theme was tied to. That makes its illustrious return in this episode 60, along with four other brand new categories. So without further delay, let's see what they are. Once again, themes in reverse will kick things off. The second category you'll be playing, Robin Hood. Now this is a special one because in last week's Disney Jeopardy live premiere on Friday night, I asked everyone who was watching live what category they would like to see next week. I gave them four possible options and Robin Hood won with the majority of the vote. So I'll be doing that every odd number episode. So episode 61, uh, tune in live so that you can vote on one of the categories in episode 62. But once again, Robin Hood is part of this episode 60. The third category in honor of Easter, it is Sunday Best. I will show you the dress, a Sunday Best dress uh, from a Disney character, and you'll simply have to identify which character wears that dress. The fourth category you'll be playing, Spring Forward. This is your Disney Parks category of the week. What it means is it's all about rides that spring you forward. All right, it was a stretch, all right? I was, I don't know. They launch you forward, I guess, but I wanted to tie it to spring. So spring forward. Yeah, you'll have to identify which ride I'm talking about that springs you forward. The fifth and final category that you will be playing on this Easter weekend is Easter eggs. I did this category, I think it was episode 21, I called it Hidden Disney's, not Hidden Mickey's, where uh, Disney characters appear in films that are not their own. I just renamed it Easter eggs this weekend because that's actually what they are called in these movies. I will show you and play you a clip from a Disney movie. And in that clip, there will be a hidden Easter egg that Disney threw in there. And then I'll ask you a question about what that Easter egg was. Okay, now that you know the categories, it is time for the easiest round of the game, the Cupcake Round. Each of these clues are worth just 200 points each. Hopefully you go five for five. Bank, 1,000 points under your belt. And if not, fear not, because the second round is worth twice as much. So let's dive into the first round, though. It's themes in reverse. Let's kick things off. Listen up. And I'll play it one more time for you. You've got five seconds. So there you go. The correct answer is the Imperial March from Star Wars. You don't have to give me the name of the song. That might be a little tough in the later clues. So just the movie works. So the correct answer here is Star Wars. <laughs> We move on to Robin Hood for 200. Little John is portrayed as this kind of animal in Disney's 1973 film. Little John is a bear. Robin Hood and Little John walking through the forest, laughing back and forth at what the other has to say. Here comes Sunday Best for two. Who wears this? Yellow dress. Wearing her Sunday best here is Jane from Tarzan. I'm Jane. No, 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 no. I'm Jane. No, no. Jane, Tarzan. 
Let's spring forward for the first time. Enter the grid and spring forward in this Magic Kingdom roller coaster, Walt Disney World's newest. What is Tron? And let's finish off the cupcake round with a 200 point clue from Easter eggs. Okay, the clip is from Meet the Robinsons. Once again, make sure you take in everything in the background, maybe some hidden images, to then answer the question correctly. Here we go, let's play the clip. Go, go, wake up! So there you have it. Now, here's the clue. Along with Toy Story 2, this Disney movie had a poster on the outfield fence before and after Goob catches the ball. The correct answer is Jungle Book. Wake up! I love Disney Easter eggs in movies. They add so much and really I feel like take probably minimal effort from the animation team. So give us more, give us more. There you go for the cupcake round. We move on now to the second round, which I mentioned before is worth twice as much. It starts with themes in reverse for 400. Let's do it again. Your five second countdown starts now. The correct answer is Beauty and the Beast. On to Robin Hood for the second time. This character confiscates a seven year old's birthday gift after barging into his house. Who is the Sheriff of Nottingham? Well, Mr. Sheriff, sure, it's my birthday present, sir. It sure is. Why don't you open it? Oh, boy. One whole farthing. Have you no art? On to Sunday Best for 400 points. There's a nice bluish dress, I guess. Who wore it? Wearing her Sunday best here is Ariel. We're gonna spring ahead or spring forward for the second time. California Screamin' launched guests forward for over a decade before it was rethemed to this. What is the Incredicoaster? <laughs> And we finish off the second round of the game now with another Easter egg. It's from a Goofy movie. Pay attention. Okay, now it's time for the clue. Name the Disney character spotted quickly in the crowd taking in a Powerline concert. Taking in Powerline Live was none other than Mickey Mouse. I hope you're not getting mad if you're not getting these Easter eggs right. If anything, consider it an educational experience. You're learning about cameos in Disney movies you might not have known before. We move on to the 600 point round now. It once again begins with themes in reverse. Listen up. Let's rewind it and play it again. All right, what's it from? Composed by the one and only Hans Zimmer, the correct answer is Pirates of the Caribbean.
on to Robin Hood now for 600 points. These specific shots of Maid Marian dancing in the forest utilize recycled animation from this Disney film. So Robin Hood actually uses a ton of recycled animation. There's the Aristocats, there is Jungle Book, but in these specific shots that I showed you, they use Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Check this out. Richard leads the great Crusades on. We'll all have to slave away for that good for nothing job. Very cool stuff. We move on to Sunday Best for the third time now. It's worth 600. Ah, simple blue dress. Nice for a Sunday. Who wore it? The correct answer is Wendy from Peter Pan. Surrounded by oh, 40 Peter. or 50 pirates. Oh, she. Huh? Her? Oh, that's Wendy. A girl. What's she doing here? And in her nightdress, too. Let's spring forward for the third time. Instead of being sprung forward, you're actually launched backwards in this Disney roller coaster that opened in 2022. It opened at Epcot. The correct answer is Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. And that's the power of the Cosmic Rewind vehicles as they're able to spin you on the track. The train is really just continuing on the track. So you're kind of going forward, but because the vehicles spun you around, you're going backwards. But either way, that's the correct answer. Great ride, by the way. Great ride. Worthy replacement for uh, Universe of Energy, in my mind. We move on to the final clue of the third round. It belongs to Easter Eggs. The clip is from Lilo and Stitch. Watch closely. And here comes the clue. Next to Nani's bed is a poster for this Disney film. What is Mulan? I feel like that was one of the most obvious Easter eggs that Disney has implanted. Usually they try to hide something, make something small in the corner. This was like, no, we're putting a poster right next to uh, Nani's bed. And then uh, we're going to show the poster on close-ups. And we're even going to write Mulan on the bottom of the poster. So there you go. Mulan appears in Lilo and Stitch. I actually think there's another Mulan Easter egg with the restaurant, if I remember correctly. Either way, let's move on to the more difficult fourth round. It's worth 800 points, and it starts with themes in reverse. Once more. Ooh, it's a great theme indeed. The correct answer is The Lion King. We move on to Robin Hood for 800. The number of rings and diamonds Robin Hood and Little John steal off of the prince's hand slash paw at the start of the film. The correct answer is four. You have my permission to kiss the royal hands, whichever you like, first. Mm, oh, how gracious and generous. <clears throat> Sire, Sire, did you see what they... Stop, <laughs> stop hissing in my ear. <coughs> We're on to Sunday best for the fourth time. Can you identify who wore this dress? The correct answer is Isabella from Encanto. Just two clues to go before the 1,000-point round. 
It's another one about being sprung forward. Get launched through the stars on this park's version of Space Mountain. The only one to feature inversions. It is now themed to Hyperspace Mountain and it lives out in France. The correct answer is Disneyland Paris. <laughs> Final clue of the 800 point round brings us to another Easter egg. You're gonna have to look closely in this one. It's all about Ralph breaks the internet. Don't worry, we just gotta keep our eyes on the prize and stay focused. Get rid of belly fat using this one weird trick. Ooh, I love weird tricks. Sassy housewives wanna meet you. They do. Congratulations, you're a winner. Really? These 10 child stars went to prison. Ooh. Number six will amaze you. That sounds interesting. Wanna get rich playing video games? Okay, here comes the clue. During the Sassy Housewives Want to Meet You pop-up, this character from another film can be spotted. The correct answer, this is pretty funny, is Aunt Cass from Big Hero 6. Hold you not to worry, we just gotta keep our eyes on the prize and stay focused. Get rid of belly fat using this one weird trick. Ooh, I love weird tricks. Sassy housewives want to meet you. They do. I tell you what, Ralph Breaks the Internet, very underrated. I love everything they do with the internet and bringing it to life like pop-ups in that scene. Okay, you know what time it is. It is time for the most overly dramatic soundtrack infused, unnecessarily spotlighted. No, oh, fine, if you insist. 1,000. Point round. Hit it. These spotlights are expensive, you know. That's why I don't use them every week. Having to rent spotlights just for this 1,000 point round. But you know what? It's worth it. 60th episode, we make exceptions. Hence why I'm wearing the shirt. Anyway, let's, uh, let's continue the game. It's the first clue from the 1,000 point round. It's your final theme in reverse. Now that's a tough one. Can you identify what movie played that song? The correct answer is Tangled. Here comes Robin Hood's final clue. The hamster dance song that went viral in the early 2000s utilizes a sped-up sample of this tune from Robin Hood, one that could be heard at the start of the film. So I watched Robin Hood this week in preparation of this episode, and I heard the song at the start, and I was like, what is this from? Why do I know this song from something else? And sure enough, it's the hamster dance song. The correct answer is Whistle Stop. That's crazy. I had no idea that was a Disney song, or, you know, from a Disney movie, but either way, pretty cool fun fact. We move on to Sunday Best for the last time. Who wore this dress? I only know one character who could pull off a dress that absurd. The correct answer is Charlotte LaBeouf, a.k.a. Lottie, from Princess and the Frog. Two clues now. Before final Jeopardy, we jump into Spring Forward for a thousand. Before being launched and racing through LA to catch the end of an Aerosmith concert, Rock and Roller Coaster has you walk through the studios of this company while you wait for the ride. What is G Force Records? It's time for the final clue on the board and your final Easter egg on this Easter weekend. Ooh, it's a clip from Tarzan. You gotta keep your eyes wide open for this one. Might even want to slow it down. <laughs> the 
Oh, your Majesty, you're such a tease. <laughs> oh, hello, hello. Uh, Archimedes Q Potter at your service. Ah, <laughs> quite a grip you've got. <laughs> oh, thank you. Was uh, oh, that one of mine? All right, here we go with the clue. While Jane's father was hanging upside down, a stuffed animal version of this character from Mulan fell from his pocket. Blink and you'll miss it. The correct answer is Little Brother. <laughs> oh, hello, hello. Uh, Archimedes Q Potter at your service. Ah, <laughs> quite a grip you've got. 25 clues are down, but one remains. That will ultimately determine how proud of yourself you will be and how nice you will be to your friends and family this Easter weekend. Will you be happy and jolly and mingling with your loved ones, or will you be in a corner studying up on your Disney history in preparation for episode 61? It all comes down to this. Let's check out the final Jeopardy category in this episode 60. Fake celebs. All right. Throughout the course of Disney's feature animation history and Pixar's history and Disney live action history, there have been a number of fake celebrities that have appeared in Disney movies. What do I mean by a fake celebrity? Well, it's someone who doesn't actually exist in our universe, but instead in the film's universe and only in the film's universe. How well do you know your pop culture within each film's universe? Make those wagers. Okay. Time is up. Like I said, there are a lot of celebrities that don't actually exist in our world. Who I'd love to go meet. Yep, just like that. Look at that. Power line. Let's check out the final clue from this episode 60. This fake celebrity artist garnered millions of fans worldwide before he tragically died during a live performance. It wasn't until after his death that the world discovered he was actually a murderer. Good luck. Okay, time is up. I tell you what, if I ever meet this fake celebrity in the afterlife, I'm going to have to make sure my hair is in perfect order because this guy's got locks for days. The correct answer is the one and only Ernesto de la Cruz. He wrote the best songs, but my all-time favorite, it's... Remember me. And that will do it for this special 60th episode of Disney 100 Jeopardy. First off, I really want to go out of my way to thank each and every one of you for continuing on this lengthy journey with me that has now taken over a year as we march towards the big episode 100, which is in just another 40 episodes. We are 60% of the way there. I'll keep coming to you each and every Friday night to bring you new episodes and be sure to tune into the live version of Disney Jeopardy this upcoming Friday so that you can vote on one of the upcoming categories in episode 62. I've been your host, Brian Perry. You know the deal. If you like what you saw, be sure to subscribe. Click that bell icon. Hello, bell. This way, you're notified every time I come out with brand new content. I will see you in just a few days for another episode of Universal's Most Missed Attractions, and then it is episode 61 next Friday. Until then. Bye-bye.